This is Barry Zelma, Zelma on Insurance. I am an attorney who has retired from the practice of law and now spend my time as an insurance claims consultant, an insurance claims expert witness, an author, and producer of these videos. Today I'd like to talk about training third-party liability investigators. The introduction of the tort of bad faith back in the 1950s resulted in the insurance industry running scared for many years from investigating fraud. Insurers avoided denying claims, fearful that they would subsequently be sued for bad faith. Insurers discouraged their adjusters from looking too closely at claims. As a result, knowledgeable personnel either looked for another career or were laid off by companies interested in improving their bottom line by hiring the less experienced personnel. Insurance fraud investigations are often expensive. The extent of insurance fraud, depending on which of the various estimates are believed, vary from $80 billion to $300 billion every year. The sum is so enormous as to defy understanding. Insurers are finding that they cannot increase premiums sufficiently to honest insureds fast enough to cover the amounts lost to fraud. They cannot afford to let such an enormous amount of money deplete their assets, and destroy their profits without a fight. The first line of defense to stop the hemorrhage of billions of dollars to fraud perpetrators is a staff of well-trained, experienced, and professional adjusters and investigators. Although many adjusters will never witness the sort of frauds that I have described in my various books on adjusting an insurance fraud. They must be trained to recognize fraud and thus be equipped with enough knowledge to separate the suspicious from the honest claim. States like California, in fact, require that insurers train all of their claims personnel to recognize insurance fraud, attempted insurance fraud, and the indicators or red flags of insurance fraud or face fines and punishment from the State Department of Insurance. The laws and regulations attempting to force the victim of the crime, insurers, to investigate and prepare prosecutions for the state are unfortunately honored more in the breach than in the following. Even when the insurer does the work to prepare an investigation to support a criminal prosecution, the local prosecutor more often than not refuses to prosecute an insurance fraud case because it requires dealing with a great deal of paper and other investigative materials and the need for expert witnesses. It is much easier to prosecute a violent crime with an injured victim and a few witnesses, and it is more liked by the general public that they do prosecute those violent crimes. Every claims person and every special investigation unit investigator should be aware that suspicious claims have the common attributes or red flags of fraud. Insurers and their anti-fraud organizations have collated the common attributes into lists of indicators or red flags of fraud. The lists were created as training aids and to be used to determine whether further investigation is required to determine if a claim is legitimate or false and fraudulent. Continually growing, these lists are known as the red flags of fraud. There are many different categories ranging from those associated with the claim itself or with insureds to indicators of specific types of fraud such as bodily injury fraud, 
or arson for profit or crashes for cash. If, when assessing a claim, three or more red flags are found, the need for further investigation should be considered and evaluated by the claims person, a supervisor, and the insurer's special investigation unit. The existence of red flags does not mean fraud has occurred. Just because there is a suspicion is not evidence. Evidence must, therefore, once the suspicion is raised, be found. Red flags are only a signal to the adjuster to investigate further so that the suspicion may be either removed or confirmed. It is not any single indicator that alerts the adjuster to the possibility of a fraudulent claim, but a combination of the red flag or flags discovered coupled with the results of a thorough claims investigation. Although the existence of multiple red flags should trigger an investigation, failure to investigate has been held to be reasonable as long as there are no patent inaccuracies or actual knowledge of false representations. Suspicious insurance claims have common attributes that insurers and fraud investigators have collated. Continually growing the lists of red flags are made available through various entities, including my books and the NICB, or the National Insurance Claims Crimes Bureau, to assist people in the insurance industry. A fraud-trained adjuster must understand that to turn a basic claims person into a fraud-trained adjuster, the adjuster must be familiar with all of the following. One, all insurance policy contracts used by the insurer. Two, the rules applied by the courts for the interpretation of insurance contracts. Three, the Fair Claims Practices Act of the jurisdiction in which they work. Four, the regulations promulgated by the Department of Insurance in their state to enforce the Fair Claims Practices Act. Five, the statutes in their state compelling the existence of a special investigation unit, or SIU. Six, the regulations established by their state concerning the training and operation of the SIU and claims personnel. Seven, the law of contracts. Eight, the law of torts. Nine, the law of fraud. 10. The obligations of an insurer to pursue anti-fraud activities. 11. Specialized knowledge for different types of insurance claims, such as sufficient medical terminology to understand the diagnoses of physicians, treatment of traumatic injuries, cost of reasonable medical treatment for traumatic injuries, methods for determining the extent of damage to structures or vehicles of the cost of repair or replacement, methods or, and methods for establishing the fair market value of items of personal property, including vehicles. Twelve, interview techniques that facilitate the obtaining of detailed information. Thirteen, negotiation skills required for obtaining fair, reasonable and acceptable settlements, and 13, the red flags of fraudulent claims. As an example, in a federal case, the court considering the evidence most favorable to the non-moving party responding to a motion for summary judgment found it was reasonable for the insurer to investigate the issue of coverage first where the insurer had noted several red flags, including being contacted by law enforcement authorities regarding a criminal insurance fraud investigation that included the insured. Under these circumstances, the insurer's focus on coverage 
before attempting to sort out plaintiff's loss of business income claims, which amounted to a combined $8,500,000, was reasonable. This was Fresno Rock Taco versus National Surety Corp. The training of a liability claims adjuster does not occur overnight. It is a tall order that requires commitment by each insurer to thoroughly train their adjusters and other claims personnel concerning the indicators of fraud. Fraud training by computer-assisted training programs is available for minimal cost from private vendors like the National Underwriter Company, the IRMI, AD Banker, IRMI's WebCE, books by Barry Zalma, and other materials published by me. In addition, various insurance produced programs exist as well as programs by independent adjusting firms. Basic classroom type training for insurance personnel is available across the country in local colleges and universities. Local colleges, community colleges, universities, and law firms will provide training for claims personnel at little or no cost. The training program should be supplemented by meetings between supervisors and claim staff on a regular basis to reinforce and supplement the information learned. The insurer should also institute a regular program of auditing claims files to establish compliance with the subjects studied to see how effective the training was to discover and defeat fraudulent claims. Monthly meetings should be held with claim staff to reinforce what was learned in the training sessions and to discuss current investigations where fraud is suspected. There is no quick and easy way to create an insurance claims professional, nor is it quick or easy to create an insurance claims professional who is knowledgeable about insurance fraud. The training takes time. The learning takes longer. Back in 1967, when I was a young trainee adjuster, the company for which I worked, the Fireman's Fund, required a 30-day classroom training session as well as almost a year of on-the-job training before they even allowed me to meet with people who were insured and had claims. Those training sessions made me a very professional claims person. And along with the fact that I was attending law school at the time, made me an exceptional claims person. This is the kind of training that is needed to make professional claims personnel. And insurers must be willing to spend the time and energy to produce professional claims personnel for their company. Those adjusters and other claims personnel who take the fraud training seriously and apply it to existing claims should be rewarded and honored for their skill. Without applying the training to actual claims, the training is wasted. This video was adapted from my book, The Compact Book of Adjusting Liability Claims, 2nd Edition, which is available as a paperback and a Kindle book from Amazon.com. If you found this video to be of use or of interest to you, please pass it on to your colleagues. It's free. And if you wish to learn about future videos and future blog posts, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and to my blog so you can learn about future videos. Videos will also be posted 
as possible on rumble.com. Thank you for your attention.